Well, this is by no means the first time that we've heard the Prince of Wales voicing his opposition to GM crops. Ten years ago, he uh, accused the scientific community, genetic engineers in particular, of taking us into realms that should belong to God and God alone. He's uh, presented his views to uh, MPs on the Science and Technology Select Committee, and he's also been outspoken on other issues, including architecture and uh, alternative medicine. What's really striking about this latest intervention is the the strength of the Prince of Wales's language. It is an extremely robust warning that GM crops are creating the biggest environmental disaster of all time, a criticism of gigantic corporations, as he describes them, driving farmers off their land. What also strikes me about this is the tone. It is extremely passionate, even angry. This is clearly a subject that has got the Prince of Wales fired up. We know that food and that farming are subjects close to his heart. He does practice what he preaches. He is an organic farmer. And last year, I went to Home Farm on the Highgrove estate as the Prince of Wales was showing children from urban environments where their food actually comes from. But his comments come at a time when we're experiencing food shortages and higher food prices. So this is likely to rankle the government. It's also likely to set him on a collision course with the scientific community. The question some are asking is, is he behaving as a prince should, or is he getting too involved in politics. Well, last year, this accusation was levelled at the Prince of Wales in a documentary. He was accused of meddling in politics and of uh, trying to lobby ministers. His advisers deny that. They say he has never been party political. They say that as the Prince of Wales, it is his role to express his views, to express his opinions, to find a purposeful role for himself and to be relevant. But they have said that when he becomes king, he would behave differently because, of course, as monarch, you have to remain politically neutral. Now, Prince Charles has firmly thrown his weight behind the anti-genetically modified crops lobby, claiming they risk creating what he calls the biggest disaster environmentally of all time. In an interview with the Daily Telegraph, the heir to the throne accused those developing GM foods of conducting an experiment with nature that has gone seriously wrong. Well, the campaign's director for the Soil Association, Robin Maynard, is in our Bristol studio. Well, Charles Olroyd, plant scientist at the John Innes Centre, joins us live from Norwich. Good to see you both, uh, gentlemen. Can I start with you, Robin Maynard? Um, don't you think the Prince is going a bit far here when he talks about the biggest disaster environmentally of all time? Well, what he was particularly talking about was the uh, issue of food, of food security and the claims which have come from the GM lobby that GM is the only way to feed the world, when in fact there's no scientific evidence to suggest that at all. So I think with just one person has made quite a, a good intervention on the GM debate. We've had months of lobbying by the GM industry saying, oh, the yields of GM crops are much greater, much better. And in fact, there is no scientific evidence of that. It's mm. quite the contrary. But, but, but Even I mean, the U.S. Department of but, Agriculture but I mean, says gone, there aren't increasing yields. He's gone beyond saying it's no magic bullet. He's almost pay, painting a Frankenstein-like future. I don't think he used those words. I think those might be yours. But what no, he but did I mean, do you know, is he an said experiment he... with nature that's gone seriously wrong, things like that. Well, I, I think, it, having read the article, it, he was particularly talking about the aftermath of the, the Green Revolution in, in India and also some of the intensive farming practice problems in, in Australia where the reliance on fertilisers and chemicals and the use of heavy machinery has actually overworked the land and has been going against the, the limits of nature and has left the land in a poor shape and pretty polluted and, and reduced soil fertility. And he's saying, he's really warning people, don't just go down the high-tech path. Think about how you can actually work with nature, with the, with the, the uh, looking after the soil, with, with thinking about how you can work in balance with pests and disease rather than trying to stamp them out with chemicals, which often bring their own problems. And we're seeing some of those problems coming from the current generation of GM crops too. Farmers are actually having to use more pesticides and is insect resistance, which these crops were designed or claimed to be designed to overcome, okay. is actually building up. Got to bring in, got to bring in Giles here, Giles uh, Oldroyd. Uh, what's your response to this? I mean, is, is the Prince got a bit of a point here or are GM crops the answer? And thanks very much, by the way, uh, for standing in that downpour for us. <laughs> it's a very, a very, very wet Norwich. 
So uh, the prince has brought up a valuable point about sustainable agriculture, but he's very much confusing genetic modification with the with the issues of sustainable agriculture. The the issues that he brings up about irrigation in uh, in Australia and in India have nothing to do with genetic modification. These are problems that are inherent to using irrigation that we see increased salinity in the soil and a lowering of the water table. This has nothing to do with genetic modification. Indeed, genetic modification has the potential to provide crops that can grow on these depleted soils. So I. I would argue it's quite the converse that genetic modification has the potential to provide the, the uh, crops that increase the sustainability of agricultural practices, exactly what the Prince is arguing for. But what are the safeguards here? And thanks, by the way, to our cameraman for allowing us to see you there by uh, giving the lens a bit of a wipe there periodically. We can hear you, though, loud and clear. I mean, what are the safeguards there to, to guard against what the Prince talks about meddling with nature and a so serious, the, an experiment going seriously wrong? Very the technology has been very well tested and, and um, we, in fact I would say that there's been an experiment going on in for 10 years now in America where, where genetic mod genetically modified crops have been widely planted both in America, in South America and in India and there are none of these monsters that the, the Green Lobby was promising. We do not have monstrous crops overtaking the world. We do not see environmental catastrophes and we do not see any dangers to human health. So I would say the technology has been well and truly tested and has proven to be both safe and valuable. Let's put that that's a Robin Maynard, Giles Oldroyd says, case true. proven. Well, if, 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 only that, if only that were true, but of course one of the problems is there haven't been, there, there haven't actually been the tests on animals or human health that the industry claims there have been. There have only been something like that's, that's, just over a, over a dozen not, tests, which actually, which, which, which actually have shed, these are they're feeding trials that the industry uses, but in terms of human health impacts, We've seen a number of studies which have shown much higher mortality rate in rats which have been fed GM soya this than simply, rats fed non-GM soya. This is simply not true. Well, it's I simply not true because the the, the, these crops are... Science. OK, just, just let Robin Maynard these, make these his point. Widely, we'll bring I mean, you back in, Giles, to hear you. Robin, just finish absolutely. that point. Absolutely. Well, I mean, it's, you know, it's very easy for me to produce the reference science. They're published peer-reviewed studies which show that there are negative health impacts. Okay. The problem is the, these crops have been described as if, as if they're equivalent to non-GM crops. And they're not. They're very different. They have been engineered in the laboratory. They use novel materials within, within the crop plant. And these are things which don't occur naturally in, in the wild. And farmers but, are finding problems. OK, let's put that to Giles. And you're clearly contradicting him. He's saying, Robin Maynard is saying, that they are potentially a threat to human health and that experiments on my there are negative that. impacts, is what I said. OK. The, uh, so I think that the biggest test is the fact that uh, we have many crops now that are very widely planted across America and South America, through India and into China. And for 10 years, for a decade now, people have been eating these genetically modified crops. There is clearly no danger to human health. We have not a single incident where, where we can say that there is a danger to human health based on consuming genetically modified crops, despite the fact that they've been grown for 10 years now and consumed widely. Mm, I mean, and isn't I the biggest threat... Is the, 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 just let me put to Robin May because we are running out of time, Giles. Um, Rob Maynard isn't the biggest threat to human health. The fact is there isn't enough food in the world to go around and people are starving. Well, people are starving, but also a lot of people are overweight as well. The, the, the food system is, is out of kilter. But GM crops, repeat, scientifically, categorically proven, do not increase yields. They weren't designed to. They were designed to be resistant to pesticides and to express some insect resistance. And even the U.S. Department of Agriculture, which is a very gung-ho GM organization, has accepted that there are no increase in yields. So the GM lobby pushes this as the solution to world hunger, whereas the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization says we need more agroecological forms okay. of farming, which are more suitable for small-scale farmers, I just want to put that in, not that GM industry. Of, I just want to put that, uh, that issue of yields to Giles. And we started with you, Robin, so we'll give Giles uh, the last word. Um, do GM crops increase yields? They, they have been shown to increase yield. It depends on the trait that you're looking at. Genetic modification is simply a technique that scientists use to engineer crops. It depends on what the trait is that you're looking at. Uh, insect resistance, there, are, there is evidence that you are seeing increased yields with, the, with some of the insect resistant crops. But it really depends on the trait that you're looking at. Genetic modification is simply a technique. And uh, if you, there, we'll be seeing new varieties of, of, of crops coming out. Okay, we'll be gentlemen. seeing new varieties of crops coming out that are targeted specifically at the issue of yield. I'm oh, sorry, Rust uh, ended there. Uh, my thanks to you both for giving the debate a full airing, a debate Thank I you. know that will continue. Charles Oldroyd there and Robin Maynard.